Hi everybody and welcome to this episode of Programming and Algorithms. So in this episode we're going to look at the idea of sequence. We've already mentioned that there are three main components to designing a program, which is sequence, selection and iteration. So we're going to start with sequence, which is the first one. Sequence, as the name suggests, is you start at the top and work your way down in sequence to the bottom. So it's the basic assumption of all program design that the computer starts reading commands at the top and works its way down to the end. So in, in our pseudocode programming language, the computer will look for the word program, whatever that name is, and then run all the statements underneath that until it reaches end full stop. Then when it reaches end full stop, it'll finish the program. If we have extra commands after the word end, it's not going to read them. And if we want to tell it to do something in the middle of the program, let's say multiply this number by two, we better have already told it what this number is beforehand. So if things are in sequence, we have to decide what do we need to tell the computer first so it can do the operations in the middle. As I said, we call that sequence and in pseudocode, it simply is every statement in order followed by a semicolon. So if it was making a cup of tea, looking at those instructions, it's just all the instructions followed by a semicolon. Let's say we skip to a command like remove tea bag with fork or spoon. As we, we make that command assuming that we've already put the tea bag in the cup, which we have point number three is to put the tea bag in the cup. But if we hadn't told the computer to put the tea bag in the cup and then we just said remove the tea bag from the cup, how would it know what we meant by that? So it's important we figure out the sequence in which things have to happen so that the computer knows how to do things correctly. For making a cup of tea, it's relatively clear, but for some programming tasks, it's not necessarily obvious what order things need to go in, but you need to spend a bit of time thinking of what sequence to tell the computer the instructions in so that it can execute them all. Because generally speaking, it doesn't have the ability to guess what you mean. So we need to be very clear in our instructions. If we wanted to make a program out of making a cup of tea, we'd just put the word program and we'd give it a program name. A sensible name for my money is make a cup of tea, which each, each first letter capitalized as per our camel case standard format. And then we finish that with a colon and then we move on and all the other commands are finished with a semicolon and then we end the program with the word end. There is another way we could do it. This uh, approach to program representation is called flowcharting. In the flowchart world, what this looks like is all the commands are put in parallelogram boxes. There's an arrow in between each one and we start the program with the word start and end it with the word end. This is another way of designing programs. It's a more visually oriented way. Some people like it better than pseudocode. It, I think it's as effective and it shows the sequence because one arrow follows the next, follows the next, which is perfect. So let's say we want to write an algorithm that says read in a number and print it out. If we just want to read in a number and print it out in pseudocode, what does that look like? It's program print number, that seems like a good name, colon, read number, print out number, end. So that's, we can't print out the number until we've read it, so the sequence is correct in that program. So that's really our first computer type program, read in a number, print it out. Let's say we're asked to read in a number and print out double that number. Think about it for a second, what would it be? What would we call it? And what would that second command be? So it's print double number, print twice the number, uh, print number multiplied by two, we could call it whatever we want, just a name that expresses the idea we're printing out double the number and our commands are read the number and then print out two multiplied by that number. For in computer programming, we, we use the star sign to indicate multiply, simply because the X or the normal multiply sign looks like the letter X, which can get a bit confusing. So we use star to represent multiply. Hope that's okay. So again, the sequence is read in the number, print it out. We give the program a sensible name and end it with the word end. So that's it. Thank you very much.